Trouble with the ledgers? Shouldn't he be asking Otto for help? That's why I'm here. Shh. Otto won't be listening. <sighs> Is this better? A little. Listen. I've some bad news. It turns out the hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders. And it may be my fault. But I swear to the goddess. I thought I had the numbers square. Sadly, that square turned out to be more of a circle. Zero, you might say. I can straighten it out, I swear, but it's going to take some time, and I'm going to need help keeping it from Otto. Be late for that, I'd say. There you are. What a surprise. So let me get this straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due, and instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. And I hope he'll dig you out of the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan. Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. And, well, Lady Karen, <laughs> but only 500 talents. We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Each. Five million. Each. They lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see. And, well, I, I must have made some sort of oversight. Those ledgers were my responsibility, and it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. Do we have that much to hand? I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, you won't. We've lightened Lord Rossfield's purse enough. After the King's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. Besides, We'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're going to make this work. All right. But that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? There might be. How's your fancy taking these to Martha and the Dame? Rocks. Rocks, he says. Worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Mm. Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark, asses to wipe and all that. I know. Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Go. Do you know why I only gave Master Clive here? Two star rubies. Because you'd rather Lady Karen killed me. Because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you. Yes. Well, I suppose this is goodbye then. Don't worry. I'm sure Karen will understand. Really? Do you think so? No. Oh. I don't. Fancy a look at the list, do you? I'm sorry to drag you into this, Master Clive. It's, it's just I couldn't think who else to ask, and you're always so willing to help everyone. You off, then. Goat means well, but when he ain't overseen, things can get overlooked. Fifteen million of them in this case. Sorry, Clive.
Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here. But it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all? Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Suppose now I have to find someone who can actually afford a star ruby. What am I going to do without sweet water and oil of talc? Do I know caravan from the Dominion's perfumeries yet? My lady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Oh, my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's debt with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> It is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago. Yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy, and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened, whether there was anything he could have done, but it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that.
Kerb will want to know the stones were delivered. If he's still with us. Give my regards to Otto. And tell him I do so miss his visits. Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah, oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best, but she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. How are you doing? Oh, this time what I really will have my head. Assuming Lady Karen doesn't get me first. You off then? In case you've forgotten, twin sides under siege. So don't be surprised if they're picky about who they let in. Lady Karen, Go tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Do you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations, and you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another, and our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. Might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. A fine continental maid whose beauty's only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh... I, uh, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledgers are square. Right away. I've seen that before. You yeah, have, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, or because the filthy soul couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died. Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship, which is where I met him. He bought passage to, I oh, forget where. But having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my post not long after that on account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close. 
promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was before fate stepped in and said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day, and there was no hiding his neck. Couldn't you and your family have? My family were the ones who summoned the constable, wanted the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him, forget what I felt, and I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the Royal Army once and for all. His ranks, his ribbons, gone. Just like that. Threw away everything he had. All to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. Always too clever for his own good, was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore to myself that I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me. Just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto, I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. He should have bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. <laughs> but then, why would he? Him, or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Would you rather go where at the helm? 
Well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go... Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that's... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. You, uh, might want to give that thing a rinse. Can't claim it's what Sid would have wanted, but even he wasn't right about everything. How are you doing? You off then?